Hey, what's up guys, and welcome to Seattle. Today we're out here on Lake Union. It's awesome, it's gorgeous. We're out on the water, there's planes taking off and landing behind me. It's awesome, it's one of my favorite places in Seattle. And uh, in this video, I just wanna come out here and give you guys an update on a lot of the new radar detectors that have come out, uh, the new firmware updates that have been released to existing detectors, and even talk about some of the older detectors that have been uh, since discontinued. Now, I've actually done one of these videos back in March. Uh, if you wanna watch that one, you can just click this button right up here. Um, since then, there's been a lot of stuff that's come out over the spring and summertime. And so in this video, we're gonna go over what those changes have been. Again, there's been a lot of changes, new detectors, new firmware updates, all sorts of fun stuff. So to start us off, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the Valentine 1. Now, as far as the V1, it's still the Valentine 1, it's not the Valentine 2, there's no new version of the V1 that's come out. However, there have been some changes that have come out to the Bluetooth modules. You've got the V1 CLE, and the V1C, Valentine 1 Connection, Valentine 1 Connection LE, or low energy. Traditionally, this has been the iPhone version, this has been the Android version. However, Valentine has updated the V1 CLE to make it compatible with not only the iPhone, but also now the Android as well. Meaning you can just get this guy and it works with both iPhone and Android, which is awesome. However, not all of the apps have been updated to work with this guy, and specifically the big one that comes to mind, it's gonna be Yavi 1. Yavi 1, big Android app, um, and a number of people have actually bought the V1 CLE, which is now Android compatible, but found out the hard way that Yavi 1 is not yet compatible. That's actually gonna be changing. So, uh, the thing with uh, Yavi 1, Frankie, the developer, he's kind of slowed down with his development. He actually had a baby not too recently. He's a proud new dad. Congratulations, Frankie. And so he's actually going to be handing off development of Yavi 1. It's actually now going open source. And there's some people on RDF who are going to be taking over, getting the source code, and they're going to be doing things like adding support for the V1 CLE. They're going to be fixing bugs. They're going to be adding new features. So a bunch of cool stuff to come uh, with Yavi 1. Additionally, on the iPhone side, you've got uh, V1 driver. This guy is now available for the iPhone. It's kind of the equivalent of Yavi 1 to give you the lockouts and low speed muting and all that kind of stuff. And uh, in some ways actually works better than Yavi 1 as far as you know, connecting in the background, especially due to the way the uh, V1 CLE works. Uh, this actually does a great job of running in the background and not using too much battery life and being more automated. So uh, I like this. I like the alert presentation still of Yavi 1 a little bit better, but uh, it's nice to have a great option for iPhone users as well. So this guy is now available publicly. Uh, something else new that has come out, you've got the new Net Radar. I've done a number of videos on this guy recently. It's quickly turning into one of my favorite radar detectors. And the reason I say that is the performance is quite good. Uh, it integrates directly with the anti-laser priority, which is pretty much the best laser jammer currently available on the market. And the blind spot filtering is actually really, really good. You know, historically, one of the best uh, remotes out there and kind of the benchmark has been the M3s, your STIR Plus and 9500CI, right? So great performance, but the blind spot filtering is kind of the main downfall of this guy. I'll talk a little bit more about this toward the end. This guy definitely has some improvements to the blind spot filtering, which is one of the reasons why it's becoming really appealing. There's some other cool stuff, like you can get a front antenna, you can get a rear antenna, um, and there's a firmware update coming to give you arrows, directional information. There's also going to be an MRCD antenna, which is going to be released here in a couple days. So for those of you guys living in Edmonton, you know, in Alberta, or if you live in Quebec and you need MRCD detection, this is one of the three, basically, radar detectors available that are going to give you good detection against that gun um, that you really need. Basically, this guy, the international version of the Redline, and the Stinger VI are basically the three main detectors uh, that are going to give you good performance again the, against the MRCD. So for those of you guys who need it, this guy is going to offer it, and there's more detectors coming on down the line, which I'll get to in a couple minutes here. Now, as far as the NetRadar, um, the apps that are available, you've got the Android version of the app and the iPhone version of the app uh, was just released that adds support for the NetRadar radar detector. So NetRadar, cool stuff there. Uh, I'm liking it a lot. I think it's gonna be probably one of the best options for an integrated radar and laser setup. So that one's actually looking really good. Now, you've got the NetRadar, which is kind of a remote detector, right? You've also now got the Redenso XP, which is basically the windshield mount version of the Net Radar. Same platform under the hood, but this is, you know, a Redenso detector. They actually work together to create this one, Net Radar and Redenso, and this is the windshield mount version. And this, for many similar reasons, you know, decent performance, really good blind spot filtering. Uh, it's turning into one of my favorite windshield mount detectors. I'm liking it a lot. It's uh, gonna be actually released here in the next couple of weeks, which is awesome. Uh, this guy retails for 400 bucks, um, and what I like about it, it's got your GPS lockouts and your low speed muting. Uh, it's got some cool stuff as well, like, you know, the. Uh, 
frequency uh, display now works, which it didn't on uh, the other Redensos. I'll talk about those next. Um, and one cool feature, which I really like and I found really useful, is you can just press the mute button here on top, and it'll basically mute all X-band and K-band alerts, but you'll still get to see them here. So if you're driving around and you're on the phone, or you got your family in the car, or anybody who gets annoyed with the detector, you can just mute it and go ahead and mute all the alerts. Um, and that's a great way to quiet it down, but still see everything that's going on here. So uh, cool stuff. I'm liking this one a lot. I'm really curious to hear what people think, you know, when it's released here over the next couple weeks. Now, as far as the other Redensos, you've got the Redenso Pro and the Redenso Pro SE. Um, I've been beta testing a new firmware for this guy. As you guys know, there's been some uh, a couple bugs with this guy, like frequency display is not totally accurate yet. Um, the GPS lockouts don't quite work. You may have to keep locking a signal out, and the lockouts don't stick. You have to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. Um, I'm beta testing a new firmware, US 16. It does have some improvements to the lockouts, but it doesn't entirely fix the issue. Uh, so because of that, they're going to be doing another version of the firmware, so they're still working on it to uh, basically simplify the lockouts a little bit to make them work better. So uh, improvements to come, not available yet, but this guy is not being discontinued. It's actually going to go, um, you know, run hand in hand. You got the Redenso XP and the Redenso Pro and Redenso Pro SE. So, uh, yeah, interesting stuff there with the Redensos. I'm curious to see what they've got coming down the line. Um, so you got the XP, you've got the windshield mount Redenso Pro, you've also got the remote. Redenso HD Plus. This is basically the uh, remote version of the Redenso Pro SE. This guy can run plugged into the Beltronics 975, and you can also plug it into the ALP just like you can with the Net Radar. Now, what they're doing behind the scenes with this guy is they're still working on the new uh, control unit for this guy, which will allow you to basically run two of them, one in the front, one in the back, again, to give you the arrows. Uh, plus, you're going to be able to do your GPS lockouts. You can't currently with the ALP while you can with the Net Radar. So when they come out with a new control module, you're going to get arrows and lockouts and that kind of stuff. Um, and they're also working on some MRCD detection, just like Net Radar is. So a bunch of stuff right now is kind of still behind the scenes uh, with uh, this guy about to come out here shortly. So that's basically the updates on the Redenso side. Now as far as the unit inside, a bunch of cool stuff there as well. So let's see, we've got the Uniden LRD950. The Uniden LRD series detectors have since been discontinued, and the LRD950, for those of you guys who have been watching my channel, you know, has been replaced by the DFR7. Same sort of thing with some nice updates. Uh, it's got, you know, a black case, it's got a new name, price is a little bit higher. Um, some things have been improved, like the K-band filtering, the way it works has been improved. There's now a KA filter to help filter out false alerts on KA band. Um, and one of the nicest updates, actually, is just the fact that when you start it up, this guy will always say, you it in and then GPS connected. Whereas this guy, you can disable those voice alerts so you don't get bothered by the voice alerts every time. A little thing, but actually kind of nice. So the DFR7 has now been, uh, you know, is now the successor to the LRD950. Now, as far as the other unit detectors, I don't talk about them that much, um, but there's some really interesting ones there. You've got the DFR1, DFR5, DFR6, and DFR7. The DFR1 is their least expensive detector. It retails for 50 bucks. Now, in general, I don't like the basic, cheap, and expensive detectors, usually because the performance sucks and you're going to get a lot of false alerts. With the DFR1, uh, unfortunately, while the performance is okay, the false alerts, it doesn't actually have a blind spot filter, and Uniden's blind spot filter is actually one of the best out there. Without that, you're going to get a lot of false alerts on K-band, and you're probably going to want to take the detector and just chuck it out the window. So I wouldn't recommend the DFR1. The DFR5 is a replacement to the LRD550. That one retails for 130 bucks, and as far as the cheapest, cheapest detector that I would probably still recommend, that would be it. It's going to have performance comparable to an M4 or so, um, and it does have the K-band blind spot filter. No frequency display, but if you're looking for the least expensive detector that I would probably still recommend would be the DFR5. Five. As far as the DFR6 and DFR7, they're more expensive, but I would actually probably recommend those as really kind of the sweet spot of price to performance. You've got the DFR6, which looks almost identical to the DFR7. Uh, it just lacks a GPS. That one retails for uh, through here for 200 bucks and the DFR7 retails for 300 bucks. Awesome. So what's nice about those ones, you know, great performance, especially on 34.7, not so much on 33.8. The blind spot filter is really good. This has your GPS lockouts and low speed muting, all that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, they didn't add more lockouts on the DFR7 over the LRD950. I wish they did. Uh, but with this guy, it's probably the best detector, the DFR7, that you'll find at like the $300 price point. The DFR6 at $200 is probably the best detector that you'll find at the $200 price point. So the unit ends are doing a really good job down at kind of the lower end uh, price point of the market. Um, so for those of you guys who ask about the lower end detectors, those are pretty much the ones to recommend. You've also got uh, the Escort where is it? 
the Passport Max. Uh, this one over here, um, this is the Max 2, but the original Max has since been discontinued. I'll talk about the Escorts uh, towards the end, uh, but this is, now that it's been discontinued, is also a great option in addition to this guy because you can also find them while supplies last, basically, um, on Amazon for like 300 bucks. So right around here, um, but it's got a nicer display and the lockouts are automatic and the red light camera database is better and that kind of stuff. The blind spot filter isn't as good as it is here, but you know, trade-offs as always, right? So with all these detectors, for more information, take a look down in the video description. I'm going to give you more information about every detector that I talk about here, uh, where you can purchase, my review of them, when I've done reviews, you know, how to configure them, all that kind of stuff. Take a look in the video description. A ton of information is available for you guys down there. Now talking about the Whistler detectors, uh, the Whistler, they've got their CR85 and the CR90. They're kind of the lower and more affordable detectors, but the performance hasn't been that great. Now they've since made a number of small updates to their detectors, and the main update has actually been an improvement to the blind spot filter. Whistler is actually calling it their uh, FDSR, or Field Disturbance Sensor Rejection. Everybody's calling it something different. With unit in, it's FDSR. Cool. Or sorry, with Whistler. Anyways, uh, with the new Whistler uh, blind spot filter, it seems to be okay. It's an improvement over the previous ones. Uh, it's still, from what I've been reading from other people who've been testing and, you know, sharing their impressions on the forum, it still leaves a little bit to be desired, but it's great to see some improvements coming from Whistler nonetheless. Uh, but for those of you guys looking for a less expensive detector, probably still lean toward uh, the Unidens. Now, speaking of the inexpensive detectors, let's talk about the Cobras. Cobra, traditionally, bad detectors, bad performance, they create problems for other radar detector ne users nearby because they basically leak energy and create a lot of false alerts, which, remember how I mentioned the KA filter on this guy? To help deal with the false alerts that Cobras actually create. So in general, I don't recommend Cobras. Like, friends don't let friends buy Cobras, you know? So, I don't know, I made that up, I think it fits. Anyways, uh, with the Cobras, they come out with a new line of detectors, their uh, RAD. So there was like the, you know, RAD350, RAD450, uh, Cobras come out with a new line of detectors. Uh, the guys down in Texas have had a chance to test the RAD350, that guy retails for 100 bucks, and unfortunately the performance was actually pretty bad, as is expected with the Cobra lineup. Now, so again, for those of you guys looking for the inexpensive detectors, I would still kind of lean toward the Unidens for those of you guys looking at that. Now, going to the opposite end of the spectrum in terms of price, you've got the Stinger VIP. Not a whole lot to, uh, uh, to report as far as the Stingers. Uh, there's been an update recently to the red light camera database, but what the Stingers really, really need is an update to their firmware to fix some of the bugs, because Stingers got a number of fairly serious bugs that they really need to address, and unfortunately the firmware updates have not been coming, and it's for that reason that the Stinger's kind of been one of the biggest letdowns for me personally. Like, it's got so much potential in that detector. I haven't done a review of the detector yet. I will be to kind of go over this stuff in more detail. But in a nutshell, like, they really need some firmware updates, and the firmware updates that have been beta testing so far, let's just say they leave a little bit to be desired. So I really want to see some firmware updates from the Stinger. They really need them to kind of fully live up to their potential. But at this point, while yes, I would still say it's probably one of the best detectors out there that's with a big asterisk, because it really needs some firmware updates to kind of help live up to its potential. So Stinger, please, 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 you know, nail down your detector and get it updated as needed. Now, finally, let's go ahead and talk about Escort, because there's a lot to talk about with Escort. Escort has released a whole bunch of detectors, and, uh, well, or not a whole bunch, they've released some new detectors, and they've discontinued a fair number as well. So, uh, let's go ahead and talk about that. Now, as far as the Escort, you've got uh, the original Escort Passport Max. Uh, this is the Max 2, same thing, but it's got Bluetooth built in. Now, they've discontinued the Max. As I mentioned earlier, at the now price, you can still find it for 300 bucks at that price point. I think it's actually a lot more appealing. That's a great price point for it. And there's been some firmware updates to actually improve the Max because originally it kind of sucked. It was a big letdown, but after they improved it, it became a much better, much more appealing detector. The Max 2 is still available. I've heard rumors that this may be discontinued as well, but for the time being, it is still available. Now, as far as the uh, Max 360, this is one of Escort's best-selling detectors. It's awesome. It's high-end. It's the most expensive windshield mount detector you can get at 650 bucks, but it's fully loaded with all the bells and whistles. You know, GPS lockouts, it's automatic, it's easy to use, it's plug-and-play, it's got the arrows, yada, 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 right? Really popular Escort's best-selling detector. Now, uh, with this guy, there's been a new firmware update that's come out, version uh, 1.5. And the main thing that's come out with this guy is they've improved the arrows. The arrows used to be pretty laggy, and they would take a while to switch from front to rear. Now, uh, originally when I tested the firmware update, it didn't look like it was doing too well. It was still kind of laggy, but pretty decent. Something else that we found um, since then is people are reporting is um, I usually mount the detectors low on my windshield just because it looks better on camera. But when I actually run it, I mount it high. Now, the thing is, when you mount the detector high, it can actually do a better job of seeing out the rear window. And when 
it does that, the rear antenna is better able to see the signal. Long story short, it looks like for those of you guys who mount the detector properly where you should, high up by your rear view mirror in that area, uh, that helps the detector see out the back window and the arrows actually work better. So for those of you guys running a Max 360, go ahead and update to the last firm, uh, version of the firmware. Make sure you do have the detector mounted up high. Uh, you can do it through the sticky cup or the blend mount, that kind of stuff. And uh, that should improve the uh, performance of the arrow flipping with the 360. Now, as far as uh, detectors that have been discontinued, in addition to the Max, uh, you've got a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, one of them has actually been uh, one of Escort's best-selling detectors in addition to the 360. You've got the 9500iX. It was kind of uh, one of Escort's first detectors to have the GPS lockout. It's a really popular detector. Again, put it on your windshield. It's plug and play. It's easy to use. It learns where the false alerts are and gets quieter over time. It's got your red light camera alerts. Like, all decent, you know, performance, all that kind of stuff. Now, that detector was released years ago, and since then, there's been a lot of updates that Escort has come up with, and they've applied to some of their newer detectors, like the Max, uh, the X70, the Passport, etc. And what they've done now is they've taken their 9500iX, they've now discontinued that, but they've made a more modernized version of that detector called the Escort iX. And it's basically a 9500iX with a new display. Um, it's got a new magnetic mount, which is new for Escort. They haven't done that with any of their other detectors. Um, the BSRDR is now available for the M4, which makes it faster, which helps address one of the biggest issues, which is kind of a slow detector to alert. So now performance has been improved. It has a new K-band blind spot filter, which is not great, but it's an improvement over what they had before. Um, it's got Bluetooth built in, so you've got your Escort Live compatibility, and you can pair it with your phone directly. So basically taking one of their best-selling detectors and bringing all the modern updates that it hasn't had before. Um, I've actually done a video on the Escort iX, kind of sharing my thoughts and overall opinion of it. Um, I haven't actually tested the iX yet, but it's a pretty cool detector from what I can see. Not necessarily my favorite one ever, but I think it's nonetheless going to be a really popular option. So again, link to that in the video description, just like everything else here. Uh, now, as far as more detectors that have been discontinued, you've got the Escort Passport. Um, that's basically the X70 with Bluetooth. M4, Bluetooth built in, BSRDR, no GPS, cool. That detector has since been discontinued and Escort's lineup has been uh, simplified. So you've got the X70, you've got the uh, iX, you've got the Max 2 for the time being. Looks like the boat behind me, uh, they're starting to take off. So cool, anyways, boat. Awesome. So Escort's uh, lineup is being simplified. They've got the red line and the Solo S3 and the, uh, the remotes and all that kind of stuff. So a lot of changes from Escort's. Um, now the Beltronics version of the Max is going to be, where'd I put that guy? Oh, right. I, I sold my GT7. Um, but that one is actually being discontinued as well. You've got uh, the Max, right? I know, Max 2, but the Max is being discontinued and the Beltronics version, the same thing, but with a different name, different case, different sounds, is the GT7. And that guy's been discontinued as well. And the interesting thing about that one is that came out in October of 2015 and it's currently September of 2016, which means that detector probably wins the award for the fastest detector to ever be released and then discontinued. It happened within the span of about 11 months or so. I'm not exactly sure kind of what Escort has in mind with the GT7 and whatnot, but uh, yeah, the GT7 has since been discontinued as well. So that detector is gone. As far as the remotes, um, well also uh, the Escort S55, that guy's been discontinued as well. That's kind of a very basic M4, kind of like the Beltronics RX65. That guy's been discontinued too. Now, as far as the remotes, uh, Escort's got their, you know, 9500CI and the Beltronics version, which is the STIR Plus. Performance-wise, awesome. They're pretty much, they've been the benchmark in terms of long-range performance. They're great in that regard. They're immune from detection to radar detector detectors. Uh, the GPS lockouts are automatic. They don't require a phone. So, again, as you drive around, the detector will automatically learn where the false alerts are and they'll mute them for you over time. The um, blind spot filtering, I think, is kind of the Achilles heel of that detector. It hasn't been updated to have the newer filtering stuff like we have with the iX or the Maxes. So the blind spot filtering still could use some updates. But the new thing with that is Escort has actually just partnered with a new company called uh, Nav TV, and they're going to be releasing a new product called the CLEAR, or CLEAR. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it stands for Cluster Integrated Radar. Now, the way that it works with those detectors currently is you've got uh, two parts that sit in your cabin. You've got the display, so you can actually see what's going on with the detector, the frequencies, all that kind of stuff. And then you have a separate controller, which you can use to configure the detector, to mute it, turn it on and off, all that kind of stuff. What Escort's going to be doing is they're going to be basically uh, integrating the detector with your car, meaning the uh, detector will now display information on your car's instrument cluster, so you don't need a second display. To control the detector, you're going to be able to control the detector from the car's buttons, like on the steering wheel. So when you get an alert, you're going to be able to mute the detector with the press of the steering wheel button, which is pretty awesome. If you've got the Escort jammers, you'll be able to JTK, again, right from the steering wheel. 
that's actually really cool. Um, you know, so a lot of cool stuff there. I'm kind of curious to see how it turns out, especially considering how Escort has handled Escort Live, which that pretty good on iPhone, Android, that's been buggy for years and I don't know what the heck is going on with Escort Live, why they haven't actually nailed it down to make it stable and solid and reliable. Take a look in the forums if you wanna see what's going on with Live. But um, I'm hoping they do a better job. It looks like they may have different people actually working with them. So uh, as far as uh, this new thing, I'm really curious to see what it is uh, and how it works. I think it's a pretty slick feature. It's actually starting to be released this year with Audis and then with Porsches and all the information, link in the video description on that stuff too. But for those of you guys running an escort detector, I think the integration to you know tie it in with your car is gonna be pretty slick. So that's kind of the new stuff coming out with escort and well, with everybody here, I think that's pretty much it. So. Yeah, there you go. There's the updates for, uh, you know, basically things that have come out over the spring and now summertime as we're getting into fall here. Um, I hope you've enjoyed, you know, kids going behind me on scooters and the planes taking off and boats going back and forth. It's, there goes another plane that's about to land back there. But uh, anyways, really cool stuff to see what's going on. If you guys want more updates, make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I'll kind of, I'll keep updating you guys accordingly as new stuff comes out. I hope you guys have found this helpful. Uh, if there's anything that I missed, if you guys uh, want to bring that up and let me know, please let me know down in the comment area. Again, if you have any questions as well, feel free to ask. Always happy, happy to answer. Um, if you guys need more information about any detector in terms of, you know, you just want to learn more about the detector or how to set it up or see my review of it or where to purchase, any of that kind of stuff, take a look down in the video description as I mentioned down there, tons of information on everything that I've talked about. Um, if you guys need help personally with any detector, you can also uh, book a private session. I'll put a link to that down in the video description uh, so I can work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you set up any of these detectors or pick which one is best for you or any of that kind of stuff. So awesome. Thanks so much for watching. Comes another plane that's coming in. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed the background show as well and I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.